Okay, here we go. How do you build a bomb-proof seasoning on your new carbon steel skillet and make it absolutely non-stick? So what we're gonna cover are the, all the basics that you need to know to get a raw pan, carbon steel pan, that does not come seasoned from the factory, so it's raw iron, and how to build a quality seasoning onto that pan using the recommended process from the manufacturer, and then getting to a point where it is a, a, a fairly bomb-proof, very hardened surface, so that you can treat it whatever way that you want. If sometime you use acidic foods or you're using metal tools or whatever you want to do to use it normally. And then how do you develop a completely non-stick finish? So this is a process and this takes time. But what I'm going to explain in this video is how to invest that time up front so that you have a wonderfully useful pan for the rest of your days. So first things first, your investment. So you've bought the pan, you've got it home, you're excited, you're ready to go. What I feel it's important for you to understand is that this pan, to get it to the point of being where I imagine you want it to be, for all the people that I talk to, they want it to basically be like a high quality Teflon pan. They, they love the weight, they know it's gonna be able to sear well and do all the things that a high quality pan will do, but the expectation is that it needs to be, or, or people want it to be like a Teflon pan pretty immediately. And that's great, but that's just not how this works. So the investment that you make in the process up front is going to determine the quality of the nonstick and how long it's going to take you to get there. So what I mean by that is that I can season this quite quickly, either in the oven or on the stove top, and make it look like a seasoned pan pretty quickly. I can do that maybe even in one application where I would show it to you like, hey, it looks great. That's quite common that that will happen. It looks good, people start using it, and right from there, things start to degrade, things go downhill. So building a really strong coating of, of polymerization, that builds for true non-stick ability is a process of layers. And each layer can take anywhere from, you know, a cooking application or 20 minutes at bare minimum of, of a seasoning method to what I like to suggest is a full hour process of heating up, allowing to, to polymerize, the oil to polymerize, and then going through the full cooling cycle. So, I'll get a little bit more detailed on, on that. So each cycle that you go through is going to build a micro layer. And underneath each layer that you're building, it needs to be hardened. So a few things there. If, if we don't prepare the pan very well, the, if the mineral B comes with beeswax on it, if we don't strip that wax pretty well, and we leave quite a lot of the initial wax on, you're probably gonna have some peeling that's gonna happen once you start to build polymerization on top of a softer wax layer. So that's hard because you can't really see it. If you take it to the sink, as they suggest, or you melt it off in the oven, but they say not to put this handle in the oven. So if you take this to the sink and you use it under hot running water, it, it's impossible to visually just see like, how much is there, did I take 80% off? Did I take 20% off? You don't know. I suggest getting it really hot and scrubbing for a couple of minutes. When you're done, there may be a tiny bit of a waxy feel, uh, but I wouldn't be concerned about taking the metal scouring pad to it and taking it right down uh, to a point where it starts to oxidize as soon as it dries. That's probably a little too, too much. So. You know, it, it, I'm not being exact because every method is gonna be a little bit different. How hot the, the water is, I suggest putting on metal, or sorry, rubber gloves, so that the hot water isn't burning you because you do want it that hot. And, and scouring it down with a, like a nylon scrubby or a nylon brush. 
uh, and taking off as much off the, the base pan as you possibly can. And then from that point, you wanna dry the pan very well, put it on the stovetop, let it dry out. And then you start to build your seasoning from there. And we're gonna go over a couple of those methods. Um, and then we start to build micro layer by micro layer by micro layer. So I'm gonna be following the Debayer Mineral B instructions fairly closely. What I don't totally love, because I've, I've tried to adhere exactly to their recommendation of pouring quite a lot of oil into the pan um, that you may have seen from a Debayer video. Uh, I've got the latest uh, information from Debayer that explains how they like to see the, the pan seasoned. They still say to put on an excessive oil. I find that it's kind of necessary, mostly because I'm also using a seasoning paste. And that is really advantageous when you're doing that. And we'll visually get over into that in a sec. The paste makes a huge difference for adhering the wax and, and have the, the seasoning oil on and all over the surface and makes it beautifully thin. And that's part of the reason that I'm able to get such great seasoning is by using a wax. It is advantageous. You don't have to use a wax, but it is really, really nice to do. So I'm trying to go in small micro steps here. Uh, and not go too quickly through any of them. Um, so please, at any point in time, if you've got a question, throw it below in this video and I will get to all of those and I may be able to make an, an updated video later on that covers anything that I've missed in this one. So what we're gonna do is that I'm going to strip off the wax off of this pan and we're gonna get onto the hob and follow the instructions that I've gone to so far. And what we're going to start to cover is the work that it entails to build a quality seasoning. And I have suggested in the past to do three full cycles in the oven when doing an oven method. That is the bare minimum to start. So three hardened full, what I say is one hour cycles through the, the oven is the bare minimum of just to start to cook. You're not going to be getting quality food release. You're not going to be getting a nonstick pan at that point in stage at all. Uh, it takes quite a lot of work past that. And what we're going to get into today is where do I see a good hardened finish to start with? And then how do we start cooking? And what do we do to maintain as soon as we start cooking? Because we will be getting some sticking as we're starting. How to identify that? How am I going to clean that? And then what am I going to do? What is called post seasoning. So post seasoning is once we've built a hard pre-seasoned prepared layering and I'm like, okay, I can now start using this pan. I'm going to use it. And that surface is not going to be as good as it will be in six months or a year from now. So I need to be very careful at this stage of not damaging that fairly thin and fragile layering and how I'm continuing to build on that layering. So what am I using to clean the pan once I've finished cleaning with the, or sorry, cooking with the pan? And then how am I post seasoning? So post seasoning is getting your pan clean and prepared after you've cooked, getting it back onto the stove top, and then the methods that you use for applying oil or the, the, the seasoning wax, and then how to build that seasoning afterwards and also what happens when we're cooking with fattier foods and less fatty foods. So first things first, I hope everybody's following along here. I'm sorry if I'm trying my best not to, to ramble and visualize the steps as we go. Um, so I'm going to take this to the sink and I'm going to take the wax protective wax coating. So it comes with wax from the factory. The main job of that or the job of that is to stop it from oxidizing in shipping. So it arrives to you in perfect shape, ready to be seasoned yourself. So some people have been confused. Hey, you're telling me to take the wax off and then put wax back on. The wax we take off is different from the wax we're going to put on and I'll go over that. So over to the sink and time to take off the wax. Okay. So we've got as hot as it's coming out there. I've got a nylon scrubby. And I am going to just get this guy good and hot. The beeswax melts pretty quickly. There's not a lot on here. I found like uh, when I've had other brands of pans, 
they sometimes have lots and lots and lots of wax on and it gets really gummy. Dubaié does a really good job on putting a really nice thin amount of wax on. But the problem there too is that you really don't know if you're taking much off or not. So as you can see, I got my rubber glove on here because it's even hot with that on. This water is piping hot. In our cooking school that I am in right now, we have very, very hot water, hotter than you would have at home. Um, so you could also boil water if you want. Um, that's kind of how hot you want that to end up being. So I'm just about kind of done here. You want both sides because we are going to season both sides of this pan. You don't want to have raw carbon seal exposed on the back side or it's going to get pretty messy pretty fast with oxidization, rust and general yuckiness. So I'd say that's getting pretty good. I'm starting to burn my hand through my gloves. So I am going to leave it at that. So I can still feel some a waxy residue on there, um, but you know I've given it enough time. I've done this enough times now that I know how that's supposed to be. Uh, that waxy residue that I have on here is totally fine, and that's going to help in uh, this, this seasoning process. So I'm going to dry this now, and we'll get this onto the stove top. So this pan is done, ready to go. Uh, it, it feels. Uh, a little sharper on the edges. Uh, I can feel the metal a little bit more. Uh, it, it does have a little bit of a different texture to it than when it is fully coated in beeswax. Even though the beeswax is so thin looking, it's hard to tell. Um, it does just feel a little more metallic to the, to the hand once it's dry. So I know I'm, I'm pretty well there. It feels a little tiny bit waxy, but it, it just feels more metallic, if that makes any sense. So that's ready to go. Uh, so I just wanted to touch on a uh, method that we're going over. We're going to do the, the stovetop method. Uh, this is a Debeyer Mineral B Pro. So this has a metal handle. This can go directly in the oven. So I've done oven method videos before. If you buy a Pro or if you want to put your pan into the oven, that's your own choice. It's not recommended by the manufacturer. If something was to go wrong with the handle, that would be on you. When I do it, it's on me. I'm very fortunate. I've never had an issue when I've seasoned with this handle in the oven. Uh, it works really, really well. Um, but the Mineral Bro, Bro, Mineral B Pro uh, is a great choice if you find the oven cook all the time. So if you boil or finish things in the oven, uh, this is a really, really great choice. Uh, more expensive, mind you, than the regular Mineral B, uh, but as you can see, it's also beautiful, very comfortable in the hand, uh, and it does exactly what you want. So, great choice. So, what we're going to be doing is seasoning with a seasoning paste. This is our own cook culture seasoning paste. It is something that we make ourselves. It comes with Vancouver Island beeswax, a really high quality beeswax, which has a tremendous scent. I've never smelt a beeswax paste that has such an amazing scent to it. I think because the way in which I'm making it, I'm using quite a lot of beeswax. I'm not cutting it uh, a ton. And it, yeah, I've got it right to a nice consistency that I'm happy with it. Uh, but the smell is great when you smell it or when it first hits a hot pan. Uh, then. I'm using a non-GMO grapeseed oil and an organic sunflower seed oil in the paste. Um, so it's high quality uh, beeswax, non-GMO grapeseed, non-GMO and organic sunflower seed combination. Um, you know, this is something you could also, if you want to make at home, this is not hard to make whatsoever. So if you just can't get your hands on this, make a little bit, get a little bit of beeswax. It's pretty easy to find beeswax anywhere now and just mix it together. Um, just try an equal part mixture to start with and see how that works and that might work out really really well for you um, or you can buy it from us so you can buy it from lots of different places that are now making a seasoning paste and we're gonna be using seasoning paste today as I said earlier because of the way in which it it uh, finishes on the pan it, it adheres to the inside of the pan and the outside so incredibly well um, you could easily easily use one of these two oils no problem um, doesn't matter 
I highly recommend using a seed oil uh, that I've talked about in many other videos, but I'll touch on it quickly here. Seed oils are important for using a grapeseed oil, sunflower seed oil, canola oil. Uh, I recommend using a grapeseed oil if you're just grabbing an oil. The reason for it is that it's consistent everywhere. Everywhere that somebody can get yourself your hands on a grapeseed oil, it seems to be the same. And so there isn't variations in the quality or the type of oil. And what I mean by that, and especially when it comes to things like olive oil, coconut oil, and avocado oil, is that there is fiber and other things in those oils, natural things in those oils, that is hard to, to season with. And the reason for it is that they become fiber, or they are fibrous, and they become carbon. So we're gonna talk about carbon when we start cooking, but adding things that create carbon only creates problems for you. So when you take a high quality olive oil or a fruity coconut oil or avocado oil, you've got a decent amount of, of uh, carbon in there and that creates problems. So you wanna have a really, really, really thin, quite transparent oil makes the most amount of sense if, if you can see that. So if you're buying a, a cheap olive oil that was quite thin, that would be better for seasoning, maybe not eating, and we may not have the same quality and, and, and health benefits, but it works really well for seasoning. And that's kind of the point what we're trying to do here is get your pan to become nonstick. So I highly recommend not using those oils and sticking to something that works well for seasoning. And grapeseed oil is a thing that we found works the best or get yourself a good quality seasoning wax. So now we're gonna go onto the stove top and we're gonna start the basics of how to create your first layer of seasoning. Okay, so this guy is fresh on. I've turned it up to a six out of 10. So I'm on an induction range here, a six out of 10. Uh, and I'm gonna leave this for probably four to five minutes just to heat like this without any oil in it whatsoever. Uh, if you were on gas, I would go at about a half to start with, same time, leave it for four or five minutes. Uh, as you can imagine, it's going to be a little bit different on the, on the bottom. Uh, it's gonna to start to brown and color quite immediately. Um, that's okay, at a kind of medium sort of heat. Um, we're gonna do the bottom here on the induction. What I'm gonna be doing is wiping the glass top as I go. If you're doing on gas, you wouldn't be concerned about that. It's just gonna cook the seasoning right onto the bottom and that is totally fine. It's actually easier on gas, the way in which the bottom gets seasoned. The top is very similar, but the bottom, you really don't have to worry about things. You can get some smoking that's gonna come out from underneath between as you're, you are wanting to cook the seasoning on the bottom up and over. Don't worry about your glass top. It's not gonna damage anything or mark or anything. It's just kind of like getting a little bit of oil over, over your pan as you're cooking. It creates a little bit of smoking. Um, and we're just putting a micro layer on, so it's just not a problem. So we're just gonna leave this on here for a few more minutes and just let it come up to heat, you'd wanna preheat your pan and then put in some oil. You don't want it to bellow with smoke right away. You wanna imagine the pan is getting preheated for that stage, that you're getting hot, you're gonna drop a little bit of oil on it. That oil is just gonna you know, start to move around on the surface without it starting to smoke. You don't wanna create a smoke point at the beginning of this process. So leave it for a few minutes and then we'll get to season. Okay, so that's been on there for a few minutes. It's starting to smoke just a little bit because it still has a little bit of, of beeswax on there, but it's getting to be a nice temperature. So the buyers suggest to, to pour in a thin layer of, of oil. When I've done that in the past, I found that it just becomes too much and I'm getting rid of a lot and there's a lot of excess and I'm wiping a lot out. So it, it seems that what they're trying to say is to pour in the oil so that it gets everywhere. The advantage of using the paste is that we can easily get it everywhere without having to use so much oil. Uh, so I'm using my traditional uh, makeup of a cotton cloth. Don't use paper towel. I find that it tears and browns and creates problems. And also you're throwing away a lot of wax. Here I have a lot of wax on my rag still. Um, I grab a little bit of the wax and just start to rub it around. So we've got a, a small amount of smoking coming off there as that's going around. 
So it's gonna be, it's more kind of moisture than smoke. It's not really stinky, um, but there is a little bit of, of smoke coming off there. So we're going to do the back side now. So if I had a, like, I've got a large hood fan ahead above me, but I don't have it on. But if I had a small hood fan at home, this would take care of any smoke that I've got going on right now. This is not filling up your home full of smoke. That's not the, what you should be at right now. Um, so that's just gonna go all over the backside. I've got that all over the inside. And a lot of the moisture is gone there. So the smoking, it starts to mellow out quite a bit. As soon as I get that, that on, um, it has a first initial kind of smoke and then it just kind of calms down. I guess kind of like making a, uh, a bonfire, you know, lots of smoke to start with. And once you get that white heat, it's, uh, it's all good. So this is already starting to show a little bit of browning in one of the, the sides here, but overall it's quite even. And I'm just gonna let that sit there and cook and cook and cook. So I just want that to just, just to absolutely adhere to the pan. If I was doing this in the oven, it'd be in there for an hour at you know this sort of temperature, more radiant heat, cooking away. So I really wanna to try to mimic that. So I'm just gonna let that cook and cook and cook. Okay, you can see this starting to get nice and golden in the middle, getting some browning on the bottom there. You could at this time, Grab yourself a cloth and wipe your glass top if you want. If you are on gas, as I said before, you're not gonna have a problem. That's gonna be blackening quite a lot on the bottom. This is just starting to a little bit, but you're gonna get that even more. So the brownie is happening, it's getting that nice golden patina in there. And uh, you can see in the middle here, uh, I'll get this a little bit closer. Um, but you can see in the middle here that there's some funny like lines and a couple of dots and that sort of thing. This is just how I applied the oil. If I wanted to be really, really particular, I could have been even more uh, even in how I layered on my oil, but it doesn't matter at all. Any of these little marks that you see like that just don't matter one tiny bit. It's not gonna make a skin of difference when you go to seasoning. Okay, we've probably been about uh, chasing 10 minutes now. The, the handle here is starting to get pretty warm. Um, and I wouldn't want to go further down here, but I can still grab it here, it's fine. But it's getting a really nice deeper brown, per, turning a little bit purple in some places. Uh, it's solidly brown on the back side. Hasn't really been coming up that just too far, um, but I'm gonna just continue to let that cook. So it's been, yeah, chasing to probably 10 minutes. I'll give it probably another 10 minutes or so, and then we'll take it off and let it completely cool. So this has been on a six now for a while. I'd say at least a solid 20 minutes. Um, it's starting to brown up the edges, which is nice. So the whole pan is starting to go golden. They're starting to patina, which is totally what I'm looking for. So about 20 minutes altogether. I'm gonna turn this off now and let this completely cool to room temperature. So this is just absolutely cool. Uh, and then we're going to do this process all over again. Quick little update. Here is seasoning number two. So this has gone through the first full seasoning cycle. And then we got some of the wax on to this pan again. And now it's sitting at a six on the stove here for about 20 minutes, just browning away. Okay, so I'm just starting layer number three. I'm putting on a very, 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 very thin layer, as you can see. There's no pooling anywhere whatsoever. And it's just those, those marks in there that are, you can't even feel them. They're no big deal. They're just cosmetic. They were from the original season, the first seasoning. But, so it's nice and shiny. Now that's gonna sit and bake away 
on a six for 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so that pan has had five really solid seasonings to it. And I'm really happy how it's turned out. So it's a uh, very even patina all over, uh, front and back. Um, and you know, I can continue on doing that and it's just gonna build more and more. But what I wanna stress here is the way in which the seasoning is built to be strong, when I'm talking about it becoming rock hard, is that each of these steps, each of the process, the full process, has its own time to harden. So ideally, like if you wanted to do this in an absolutely perfect way from, from my experience, is you would do a seasoning and then leave it for hours. Like even hypothetically, if you have the will, do this a seasoning, put it away for 24 hours. Let it fully, fully harden and dry up, completely harden, and then do your next one. So I guess what I'm suggesting is you could take five days to season your pan well to do five coatings like this. And from my experience, the more time that I give the pan to come down to room temperature and sit around, like if I leave it overnight from doing a seasoning one evening and then the next morning, I find that that seasoning is just even that much more dry, that the tackiness is gone, it's just harder. Uh, and so, it, which logically makes sense that it hardens, it cures over time. And that's like as paint, as you, you, we all know, when you paint something, you paint the wall, whatever, it gets harder over time, right? It cures. Um, that's the same thing that's going on in the pan. So if we rush this process up front and we start layering and layering and layering non-cured coatings, you're getting a soft buildup underneath. And often I'll have people be like, oh, I did all it, look great. First time I cooked it all peeled off. I don't know exactly what each situation is. I don't know if they didn't take enough beeswax off or you know, the, the soap that was used was remaining or whatever it was, but I would highly suspect that in a lot of those cases, it's rushing the initial seasoning. It's layering on top of non-cured layers of seasoning that has weakness in its foundation. So, you know, this may all seem like a lot of, of effort up front, but what we're doing is building our own nonstick pan that'll last you for ages. And so really the upfront investment here is very, very small compared to what we're gonna get from the pan and the enjoyment that you actually get from using a pan that becomes truly nonstick and how easy it is to grab it. You know, we think that Teflon is easy. You know, this is feel good easy, right? Like this pan is the, a, an amazing high quality iron pan with a totally natural nonstick that hasn't degraded the planet, hasn't been ingested into your body and you can redo it and have this thing for generations. So, you know, like I understand where some people right now in this video are gonna be like, wow, this is a lot. I'm just asking you to, to hold on and, and continue along this journey because once you get this, it's actually not that big of a deal. I'm trying to go step by step and go over everything in its minute detail. But what you'll find is that once you get this and it becomes a rhythm, it's very easy to continue to season and post season to keep your cookware in good shape. And that's what we're gonna get to now. So I'm going to chop myself up some onion. I find onion is a really good test for a pan because if it's not well seasoned, it can easily stick. Uh, I will be using a little bit of grapeseed oil to be cooking this in. Um, I find that a, a tiny bit of fat in there or even moisture, like a little bit of water is all gonna, also gonna help. If you don't wanna cook with oil, you could use some, some moisture um, from, from water and that works really well. Or even some broth, if you have broth, that's fine too. Uh, but I'm gonna use a little bit of, of grapeseed oil just to give the pan just a little bit of a gloss. And then we're gonna cook up some onions and I'm gonna cook them to the way in which I want them first and then see how the pan is. And then we're going to wash that pan and look at it after it's had its initial cook. And then what I'm gonna do is what you may not like me to do is that I'm gonna burn some food onto it because that just happens, right? We, we go do something, we answer the phone, we do whatever and food will at some point in time burn on here and we wanna see what that looks like and how we reclaim that. So I'm gonna do two different steps here. So first we're just gonna cook some onions normally. So here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put a dab of seed in there, give it a wipe around, just so it's shiny. So 
So there's not a lot in there. I'm gonna grab an onion. I have the heat at a six. It's preheated for three or four minutes. So right now at a six, we are medium cooking. So the difference between carbon steel and cast iron, mostly cast iron skillet being like so, uh, is that it, it likes high heat. Uh, it's a thinner pan uh, and it will brown and sear quite easily and quite well. Um, the higher the heat, the worse it can be to your seasoning. So always be cautious of burning your seasoning right off if you're doing a lot of high heat cooking. And just so everybody's clear, high heat cooking is usually less healthy than normal style cooking. So the onions here we're gonna do is just gonna be at a, a, a six. Um, six to seven out of a 10 I find works really well in carbon steel. Uh, it, it doesn't work as well when you're going to below medium heat as well as cast. It just doesn't hold the heat as well. Um, so what we're gonna do now is just let that cook away and, uh, and just see what the results of, you know, I'd say five minutes of cooking we're probably gonna do, you know, where if you're using a light aluminum pan, um, you're gonna be cooking a lot faster, but you're not gonna be cooking thoroughly. You're gonna cook things on the outside, things will brown and start to color, but you're gonna have inconsistency on the penetration of the heat through the food. So an advantage of using such a high quality pan like, like carbon steel or iron, or even really high quality stainless steel, something really thick, is that it slows the heat transfer and throws the heat out throughout the pan. And so the heat comes through in a more regulated way and the food that's inside gets a chance to cook thoroughly through without overcooking on the outside and undercooking on the inside. And that's why you buy high quality cookware. Um, that's the advantage of, of cooking with it. So we're just gonna let this cook away and uh, we'll see the results here in a minute. Okay, we're getting to a point here where it's nicely cooked through. Things are starting to kind of lacking on the surface here a little bit. And it actually smells that it's starting to be done, right? As food does when it's cooked. So um, what I've done a couple of times through here, what I find works really well with onions, add a little bit of water um, if things aren't fully cooked through uh, and things are starting to brown on the outside. You add a little bit of water, things slow down a little bit for vegetables. It gives you an opportunity to continue cooking through. Um, and that's what I find onions work really well with a little added water when I cook them. Um, just a, a nice thing for making them plump, I find. Uh, but this is how we are with our surface. Um, there's definitely a bit of carbon buildup on there that we're gonna look at when we go to clean them but the onions are looking good. So throw those on there. Right. And there's the results of our pan. It's got some, you know, I would say that is definitely not behaving like a nonstick, but that is really not hard to uh, clean up. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna do that while this pan is warm. So over to the sink we go. Okay, warm pan, mm, you know, room temperature water, a little steam there, and then chain mail scrubby, that chain mail, and then it goes. So I want to be careful about going down too hard. I've made, you know, there's a bit of carbon on there. I probably didn't need to go even as hard as I did. I thought I did, but no. So there's a, you know, there's some um, little scouring there in, a little bit of scouring there in the surface, which is not a big deal. We're gonna put this back on the hob and, uh, and look at that, but that's a nice clean pan. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post season this. Before we do our next test, I'm gonna post season this pan on the hob. So here we go. Okay, so I have, dried that fairly well. I'm now going to get that back on a six. The pan is still warm from cooking and get the wax back on there. So the pan is nice and smooth. I'm gonna get that all around. And same as we did before, I'm now gonna just let that Heat up, heat up, heat up. 
So I would say that's going to be you know, minimum of five minutes to a maximum of 15 minutes. You know, if I was doing other things in the kitchen, I'd just let that cook and cook. Well, I'm going to just let that cook and cook away. So that's going to sit there for about 15 minutes and just cook on. Okay, so I've got that pan now back to being really nice and hot. It's been on the heat there for 15 minutes or so. And I've gotten that seasoning back nice browned. I found that I was a bit too aggressive with the chain mail. This seasoning being as new and as fresh as it is, this is a good learning for me. I don't deal with newly seasoned pans every day, so I forget how sensitive they are when they're new. You know, I went in there to clean that, to scour the, the, the seasoning, like I would with one of my pans that is months and months and months old with a seasoning. Every six, eight months, year, I'll strip my seasoning down and re-season it. I do it a little bit because I like it because I'm a bit geeky that way, and I just love a nice smooth pan. I don't like build up in the corner, so that's what I do. Um, Anyways, uh, I, I went a little bit too hard, and but re-seasoning on there and, and cooking it on the stove top has kind of filled in any little scouring marks that I had made that I'd gotten a little bit too close to the surface. I'd taken more of that off. So note here is to go gently in cleaning. I could have just gone a little bit longer and gone half as hard, and I would have had the same results. I just went a little too hard, a little too aggressive, um, but it's bounced back really well. So I'm gonna let this pan completely cool. And then this next task, what we're going to do is that we're going to actually burn some food into it. Um, and that's going to be where things will go a little bit sideways, but again, we'll be able to recover that. And that's what we're going to go over. So next task after this cools. Okay. So here we go. Burnt on, no, that's not so bad. It's really dried the crap out of these things, but you know, it's, it's got some fairly burnt on carbon here. So what we're going to do is get rid of these guys and take this over to the uh, sink. And we're going to do a little bit of cleanup and then uh, post season. The pan's still hot. I'm going to get some, you know, lukewarmish water onto that pan. And then I'm using the field scrubby here. I've got a regular scrubby and the field scrubby. So I'm just gonna go in and actually the hand is still pretty hot. <laughs> just it doesn't take long to cool the pan down with some running water. So I'm gonna use this guy. Actually, you know, this is one to use also. Just go in and little circles. I am definitely going into the seasoning here, but to get the carbon buildup off, I'm just trying to go at the carbon buildup spots and just work them off a little bit. But I'm definitely, and I, I probably softened and degraded the surface of this going too hot. So I'm taking this down. And what I'm gonna find is that I've taken a decent amount of the seasoning off, which is always frustrating when you've had an accident like this. You know, I, I did this on purpose, but I'm sure you wouldn't do this on purpose and this would be an accident. So I've now I've got that cleaned and I can still feel that. Like what I try to do is have like a smooth texture and with my hands as I go around, I can feel this here. So I'm just going to go in just a little bit more. I have to try and be careful and not go too hard here. But I also would rather do more seasoning than start building up on a carbon deposit. Because carbon will flake. Carbon will continue to dry over time. And then you will get flaking. All right. So... That is feeling better. I've got a little bit more. Your fingers are the way in which you're going to be able to tell what that is. So you feel it with your fingers. Okay. So there we go. Yeah, quite a lot of the seasoning has come off from overheating and burning that uh, off. So we're going to get this back on the hob and get back to work. Okay, so this is how it's come back. After one seasoning, you know, it's still, there's the original 
that's what's come off from the burn. Um, you know, one layer on there. So you kind of starting again. If this happens to you, you're starting again, but there it is, you know, that part, the outer part is still great. The inner part we're working on and you can easily do that on the stove top. Okay, so we've gone from start fresh, taking the wax off, getting it washed, getting it on, building up that seasoning, cooking, cleaning, post seasoning, then damaging the pan and what we do when we damage. So hopefully you never have to fix it after damage. Hopefully it's just smooth sailing for you. But what I want to go over was some of the important points of how this whole process works. So number one, you don't have to take off all the beeswax, just a bunch with hot, hot water. And that's great. Don't stress over that. Get it onto the hob and start layering up, giving it lots of time. Give it quite a bit of time for preheat before you put on either your grapeseed oil or your seasoning wax. And then once that on, on a medium, medium, just above medium heat, let that cook and cook and cook and cook. You know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It, once it's kind of done its initial smoking, it just sit there and dry and cook and bake on. Then once that off and you've got that beginning of that golden patina, get that pan off and give it lots of time to cool and to harden. So hardening in between processes, the better, the longer you leave it in between that it gets time to cure, the harder that shell becomes. And that's how you get that rock hard patina is getting the layer upon hard layer upon hard layer with time. So time is important. So like I said earlier, if you took a week to season your pan to get it right ready to go, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad way to go about it, to think of the time that it really needs. So a lot of us don't have that kind of investment of time to put into a pan. I understand that, but the more you can do, the better you can do between the timing of allowing it to cure, the harder it's going to become. And then the last point for me to make is the time that it takes for it to become truly nonstick. So it becomes less sticky. So you can do things that are reasonable. As I showed you in the video, it was, you know, the, the onions came off fairly well, but it wasn't truly a nonstick pan yet. It wasn't like Teflon. And once you get that seasoning over time and continue to post season where you're taking it out of the sink, once you've, you've cooked, and however you've cleaned it or needed to clean it to whatever sort of a degree of cleaning, you get it back on, get your paste on or your oil and then post season. And it's a little bit of one step back in cooking. It can degrade the, the seasoning a little bit depending on what you do, but then your season is going to start building further and that one step back, two step forward. And every time you cook, you should get one step forward so that over time it's building and it's building and it's building and it's building. If you're cooking quite greasy foods, you're not going to have as much of an issue of needing to add so much uh, oil or paste post. But a lot of times when you're cooking you know, vegetables or pancakes or things that are drier um, you, without fat, saturated fat, mostly from meat and dairy, um, you're going to find that you need to add some sort of a of fat back in. And so just keep building and keep building and be patient with it. So that I hope in a large nutshell, uh, is going to help you become successful with your carbon steel pan. Please, if you have any questions, put them down below. We're here to support you as best as we possibly can. Our goal is for you to successfully use carbon steel or cast iron, but never to even think about going back to coated Teflon, ceramic, whatever sort of basically disposable pans that are in the marketplace that we all know now that will never last and will wear out. And so the choice that you've made here will last you forever and your kids and their kids. Like there's nothing that can ever go wrong with this pan. It will last forever and ever and ever if we look after it right. And learning that rhythm and getting into that habit of just treating it the way in which we talked about here will allow it to last for generations to come. And to me, that's really exciting. Another pan that we've taken out of the landfill. So thank you so much. Good luck.